Right, so now let's, um, let's turn to the matching model, having discussed the neoclassical model. So in general, in models, um, as we've said, we um, describe the behavior of all the agents, so all the participants in the model. So here that would be firm and households. But usually these um, agents, when they make decisions, they take as given, uh, so either their beliefs or they take as given market variables in the neoclassical model, what they take as given was a, was a wage. And then we need an equilibrium condition to make sure that the what they take as given or what they believe is actually what's realized in reality. So we need an equilibrium condition to ensure internal consistency of the model, okay? Uh, at a high level. Basically, in models in economics, we always assume that people behave you know, rationally um, and then that whatever they take as given uh, or whatever they believe is, is realized. So sometimes you hear about rational expectation, that's exactly that rational expectation means that um, what people expect is going to be uh, actually realized. Um, but here, you know, we, you know, it's a much simpler setup. Here we're just saying that the labor market tightness that people take into account when they make decisions is actually going to be realized. That's going to be our equilibrium condition. Okay, so what is the equilibrium condition? So the equilibrium condition is here to ensure internal consistency of the model. So what does that mean here in the specific setup that we have here? So it's to ensure that uh, So, so it's to ensure that the tightness theta that firms take into account when they formulate um, their plan and of course that's very important because once they take into account theta they're going to post vacancies accordingly uh, and here workers have a fairly passive role they just show up on the labor market and wait to get a job but in um, extension of the models that we'll see later on, they'll have also to make decisions. For instance, they'll have to decide how much they want to search um, based on the market tightness. And, and uh, so, you know, the tightness will also determine their behavior when they enter the market. So, in general, we want to ensure that the tightness theta that firms and workers take into account is realized. So, to ensure that the tightness theta which is taken as given by um, firms and workers is realized, okay? So firms and workers are going to behave as if the tightness of the market is something. We want that something actually occurs, uh, okay? Because otherwise if people think that, you know, say workers think that they'll find job very easily and they don't, your model is not internally consistent or if firms think that they'll be, you know, they can easily uh, find workers, but they don't, the model will not be internally consistent, okay? So we'll fail that internal consistency requirement, okay? Uh, so what does that mean? So it means that uh, the tightness taken as given by firm workers is realized. So what does that mean? It means that if, let's call V of theta the number of vacancies posted by firms uh, that believe, or oh, sorry, that, that, um, that um, take <coughs> data as given. If we call V of theta the number of vacancies posted by firm that take theta as given, if we call U of theta the number of unemployed workers uh, you know, that take theta as given, 
Okay? Um, so we've introduced that. Our equilibrium condition So as we said, it's a condition for internal consistency. So the equilibrium condition is going to be that V of theta divided by U of theta. So the number of vacancies posted by firm that behave optimally given theta divided by the number of unemployed when unemployed workers behave optimally given theta has to be, so this V over U of theta, which is the tightness that's realized on the market, you know, when people take theta as given, has to be equal to theta. Okay. So that's going to be our equilibrium condition here. Okay. Uh, so it says that the true tightness that's realized, which is V over U, that's the tightness that's realized on the market is equal to theta, which is uh, the mark, the tightness uh, that people took as given. Okay. Um, so when they formulated their decision, the tightness taken as given has to be equal to the has to be equal to the realized tightness. So tightness taken as given, you can also call that a belief about uh, um, market variable at the time when you form your decision. That has to be equal to what will actually happen. Okay. Um, but it turns out that this equilibrium condition can be rewritten as supply is equal to demand, uh, which is quite a wonderful result. So how do we do that? Uh, how can we show that this kind of abstract equilibrium condition can be reformulated as the classical condition supply is equal to demand? Well, uh, let's work on that. So we are going to uh, re we are going to reformulate the equilibrium condition. Okay. So what is V of theta? So V of theta, we said, was the number of vacancies posted by firm who take theta as given. Okay? So now if you're a firm and you think that the tightness is theta, how many vacancies do you post? Well, you always want to post uh, vacancies because firms are uh, in a world in which uh, flows are balanced. So firms, uh, they see the world as having always balanced flows. So uh, how many vacancies are you going to post in a world like this? So first, if tightness is theta, the number of workers that as a firm you want to have is the demand, LD of theta. So you're a firm, you know that your tightness is theta, you want to employ L, LD of theta workers. Okay. So how many vacancies are you going to post to sustain that level of employment? Well, if you have LD of theta workers, you know that it means that at any point in time, you're going to lose S times LD of theta workers, because S is a separation rate. So your firm, you know that you're constantly losing a fraction S of your workers. So you know that you're constantly using S times LD of theta workers. Now, your firm, you want to uh, maintain your size constant. You know that you're losing this many workers. It means that you need to hire this many workers at any point in time to be able to keep your size constant. So if your firm, you know that you need to constantly hire S S times LD of theta workers are the number of hires that you need to maintain at any point in time. Now, if you need to have that many hires at any point in time, how many vacancies do you need to post? Well, you know that when you post a vacancy, it's filled only at a rate Q of theta. So it means if you post V vacancies, you have only V times Q hires at any point in time. So if you want to have S times LD hires at any point in time, the number of vacancies you need to post is S times LD of theta divided excuse me, uh, S times LD of theta divided by Q of theta. If you post S times LD of theta divided by Q of theta vacancies, you will constantly be able to have S times LD of theta higher than therefore you'll be able to maintain the size LD of theta. Great, so we know what is V of theta. What is U of theta? What is the number of unemployed 
workers are given if you believe that the tightness is theta. Well, this is just equal to h, the number of workers in the labor force, minus ls of theta. Because ls of theta, the labor supply, is the number of workers who have a job if you believe that the tightness is theta. You know? So given that the labor market flows are balanced, if you have a tightness of theta, you're going to be able to have ls of theta workers employed. And therefore, you're going to have a number of unemployed, which is h minus ls of theta. So on the worker side, if you believe in theta, you're going to expect to have u of theta workers, which is equal to h minus ls of theta. Okay, great. So now, our equilibrium condition, imposes V of theta divided by U of theta is equal to theta. So if we rewrite it using what we've just established, what does that imply? We can rewrite this as S times LD of theta divided by Q of theta times 1 over H minus LS of theta is equal to theta. Okay. All right, great. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's manipulate a few things here. So first of all, recall that Q of theta is um, equal to F of theta divided by theta. We showed that that just comes from the property of the matching function. Second, uh, recall that uh, h minus ls of theta, given the expression for uh, ls of theta, that's going to be h times 1 minus f of theta divided by s plus f of theta. That's using the expression for the labor supply. So that's going to be h times s divided by s plus f of theta. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, so these are two things that we're going to use. So now if we plug that in the expression we have above, we can rewrite our expression above as We're going to rewrite it as theta times Ld of theta. It's S divided by F of theta. So here what I've done is I've just rewritten Q of theta as F of theta divided by theta. So here's what I have. And then times, uh, so using the expression for H minus Ls of theta, that's going to be S f of theta divided by s times 1 over h. And that has to be equal to theta. Okay, very good. Uh, so here we can immediately make a couple of um, simplification. So you can see here I can eliminate theta here and here. I can eliminate s here and here. So now if I collect everything, what do I get? So I get that Ld theta divided by uh, f of theta over s plus f of theta times h that has to be equal to 1 okay uh, using only simplification and now notice here that this what is this this is just ls of theta. So I can rewrite my expression as Ld of theta is equal to Ls of theta, which is the result that we were looking for. Oh, sorry. Here we are. Um, so the initial condition that the realized tightness 
is equal to the tightness that's taken as given, which is an equilibrium condition for internal consistency. This just boils down to labor supply is equal to labor demand, which is uh, really quite a wonderful result. Uh, and notice here, the tightness is an aggregate variable um, that just arises on the market once firms post their vacancies and um, you know, workers start searching for jobs. Um, there is no need for an auctioneer to post a wedge or anything like that. This, the equilibrium condition is just going to arise uh, very naturally. So it's quite a, it's quite a beautiful equilibrium concept.